his salvation and that you want him to be your savior. Uh, James says, "Faith without works is dead." The Lord says that if you love me, you will keep my you will keep my commandments. Uh, and, and so that's what we need to do. It's a lifestyle. It's it's a it's a true repentance of turning away from the sins that you're committing and and, and giving your life and your heart and a hundred percent commitment to the Most High God and serving Him daily and, and and learning how to seek Him and what He wants us to be and what He wants us to do. And I have articles on the Kingdom of God and teach me how to pray and things that can help you at my website cherryshriner.com you can look in the article section uh, things that can help you build a relationship with the Most High God things they won't teach you in your churches you know you go to church week after week after week and they don't teach you how to build a personal one on one relationship with the Lord you know uh, if you're always just praying to the Lord a one sided relationship is rude you're doing all the talking you're, you're doing everything you think you're reading his word you're not learning how to sit back and hear from him you know a relationship with the Lord is a, is a two way relationship it's a two way relationship folks and he wants it that way and he wants you, you to make him a part of your everyday life of, of every little thing that you do he likes to hear those things you know, the times I hear from him the most are when I'm doing dishes or I'm taking a shower. Uh, I don't have my mind particularly on any one thing at the time, just doing dishes. And he knows when you're, when you're distracted or, or when you're focused on something else. And when you're not, when you're just kind of relaxed, those will be the times that, that he reaches out to you the most. You can hear his small voice in your heart, uh, that you can feel him leading you or urging you or pushing you to do something. You know, the Lord does not speak to our heads. That's the elf God. That's, that's also Satan. Uh, demons will speak to your head. The Lord does not speak to your head. And, and so that's one way of differentiating. Ask him to teach you how to hear his voice. Ask him uh, to teach you how to build a relationship with him. To reveal himself to you. And that's where you start. And that's, and that's the ground level of, of learning how to build a relationship with him. One that, that you know, no, no two relationships are alike. Uh, you know, I, I, I know a sad Lord, but I'm just myself with him. I let my hair down. Uh, and and I'm, I'm just me. I don't have to go real formal uh, to talk to the Lord. And, and so you're going to build the kind of relationship with him uh, that, that, that you approach him with. Let him be himself. Be yourself to him. Nothing real formal here. We're just, we're just humble servants before the Lord. And we want to do his will on earth and, and, and submit your life to him 100%. Give him 100%. You know, he says that if you put anything else before him, then that's idolatry, that's an idol. If you're putting your, your, your husband or your wife or your church or your pastor or your, even your Bible can become an idol. Don't put anything before him. Uh, just, just humble yourself before him and, and, and talk to him every day and make him your priority. Anything else is idolatry, folks. That's a big thing that the churches don't understand today is why so many of them are in idolatry uh, because they put their buildings and their ministries, and their Bible reading, and, and their devotions, or, or whatever. They put uh, anything else before the Lord, just, just humbling themselves before Him and daily, and seeking Him, making Him uh, their priority. And the way you do that is by talking to Him, by being, by being in prayer, or just in a conversational mode with Him, just talking to Him, making Him a priority. Most just don't understand that. They don't, they don't realize uh, to actually hear from Him. Uh, but you can you know, he says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and I know them. It's because they've taken the time to sit at his feet and learn how to hear his voice and learn how he works and how he talks to us. And, and so I encourage you to, to build that one-on-one -on -one unique relationship that we all have with the Lord. Uh, uh, because the churches won't teach you that. They won't teach you it. Uh, so, I, you know, if you're on the fence, get off of it. If you're backslidden... Uh, just, just re renounce and repent of your sins before the Lord and ask Him to restore you uh, to where you need to be in Him. You know, true repentance is turning away. It's not just saying, okay, Lord, I'm sorry for doing this. Turn completely away from it. He wants all of you, not just one part of you. He can only work with what you give Him. If you only give Him 50% of your life, and that's all He has to work with, folks. He can only work with what you give Him. And anything else that you put in front of Him becomes your idol, and you're in idolatry, and you're breaking His commandments. He says that if you love me, keep my commandments. And, and one of those commandments, thou shalt have no other idols before me. He is to be your main priority, the dominance of your life.
Anyway, if you said that prayer, folks, welcome to the kingdom of God. And, and now work and, 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 and seek to keep your relationship with Him, uh, to perfect your faith in Him, and, and, and grasp onto that salvation you have now in Him, and share it with others. Share it because He is the only one uh, through the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Yeshua, the Son of God. He is the only one. Uh, that can give us eternal life in heaven and Jesus became the mediator between God and man and the only way that we can worship and get to the most high God is by accepting the sacrifice and the salvation of his son another thing I want to bring up is the blood of Jesus can break all contracts oaths and agreements that you have possibly made with Lucifer if you're in the occult uh, you're part of a, a witch or a satanic group or, or something that's uh, uh, considered a secret society and you've made oaths. The, the blood of Jesus can break any kind of oath or contract you've made with Lucifer. He doesn't want you to know that uh, because he wants you to think that he owns your soul. Uh, but he does not own your soul until you are dead. And so the blood of Yeshua can break any contract that you've made. All you have to do is renounce making any kind of oath or promise or, or making any kind of binding contract with Lucifer, renounce it uh, and your affiliation with him, your association with Satan, just renounce it uh, and, and, and tell him that you no longer are serving him, that you have accepted the Lord's salvation, that you have asked you to have come into your heart and that he is now uh, your Lord and God and, and renounce any kind of participation or association with Lucifer. Uh, and proclaim your salvation to Lucifer and that you are no longer his, that you are now a child, a, a, a son or a daughter of the Most High Gods. Now, don't let Satan buy, uh, back you into a corner and think just because you made some kind of an oath or a contract to him uh, that he, you are bound to it because you are not. Until, until you are dead, Satan cannot own your literal soul. So while you are alive and you are breathing here and you are alive today, you can break and renounce all commitments, all associations with Lucifer. And so, uh, if you want to do that, do that. Pray that salvation prayer that I prayed. Uh, you know, acknowledge and accept uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's redemption and our salvation through Him. Renounce your involvement with Lucifer. Ask that the blood of the Yeshua will break any oaths, contracts, agreements, bribes, and participation with Him. Renounce any and all involvement with Satan. Ask for forgiveness from the Lord to be delivered from evil and control that Lucifer has placed over you. Uh, ask him to heal you and cleanse you of all evil and to fill you with his Holy Spirit and to lead you and teach you the ways of the most of, of him, of the Most High God. You know, on the Lord's name, the Lord will write you your name in his book of life and you are now a child of his. And so don't let anything take that joy away from you. Once you accept the salvation of the Lord, your name is written in the book of life, and you are His. But folks, you can, if, if you walk away from the Lord, and you walk away from the shepherd's fold, uh, you're in danger of losing that salvation. And so don't lose it. I mean, some people will say, uh, eternal security, once you're saved, you're always saved, and that's not true. <coughs> the Lord says, if you are mine, you will keep my commandments. My, my, the, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And so if you have wandered away from the fold and, and you're in a backslidden state, then you're no longer being led by the Spirit of God and you are in danger of having your name written out of the book of life. In Revelation uh, I think it's 3, 5 or 5, 3, uh, it says your name can be written out of the book of life. And so be careful of that. Uh, strive to keep your name in the book. Uh, and you can do that just by making the Lord dominant in your life and being led by the Holy Spirit. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. So let be led by Him. Uh, and I'll leave you just with this encouragement. I'm going to uh, attach this at the end of all of my recordings. Uh, it's to just seek Him, follow Him. There's, an, there's no other way to God but through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you've accepted His salvation today, uh, then start building that one-on-one -on -one unique relationship uh, that we are, we can, and, and we need to build with him. God bless everybody. Good day.